Okay, so we're here. We're here with Damien O'Reilly, who's officiating at this tournament here, the Walk and Football. Damien, uh, I've heard the importance of the referee, the third team in every match. I've heard the importance is particular. It's particularly important to have them well trained if this if this football walk and football is to develop here in Ireland. But can you give us your your input? I, I would totally agree with it. Uh, basically, what we have is guys who have been playing probably vets football. Uh, coming straight through into walking football and they think it's called walking football because you're 50 and plus you know yeah. 50 and 60 and 70 unfortunately the guys that are 60 and 70 won't be playing like teenagers again you know so there is a, a certain degree of contact experience in most games now the rules of the game to protect the players are non-contact sport especially coming in from behind uh, in some tournaments you can get away with coming in from the side yeah but it has to be really clean you know so it'd be lovely if the referees and the players would come to a game with the same mindset yeah and they do they want to come and enjoy themselves and play walking football but unfortunately when the whistle goes the boys are back in their teenage years <laughs> and they forget it's walking football yeah yeah so the whole ethos of walking football is to play from your 50 until your dying day yeah. yeah, and we have guys here. I think the oldest guy here today is 84. Yeah. So, if you're going to get physical when you're 60 and 70, those injuries are not going to take days. They're not going to take weeks. You're talking a long time. Yeah. And yeah. we we don't want to lose any players. So what I say to the players as a referee, we've come here with aches and pains. I don't want you coming off the field with any more extra ones. Yeah. Just go off with the same ones you came on. Yeah. So we are on the same page, but unfortunately. You know the ebb and flow of games yeah, yeah. and the enthusiasm can yeah. get well i can understand it i mean this particular competition is very high standard because they they, they they represent their countries a lot of the teams here represent their countries so it's a it's a you know i was talking to the irish team over there the english team as well there are selections there they've, they've gone on trials and they've been selected to play here but in terms of walking football for the ordinary uh, punter that's thinking about get, getting back into yes. football and um, you, you you know you said about coming in from the side and things like that it, it, the, the whole thing is to reduce the, the potential injuries not absolutely right. you know the whole ethos of the game is get boys and girls who are playing when they were teenagers and stopped in when they were left either got families or work that become intensive you know and sat on the sofa and enjoyed a pizza too many yeah yeah to get back up off that sofa come out get a bit of fresh fresh air in the lungs a bit of muscle muscle tone on the legs you know yeah so it, it is very much about protecting the players because we appreciate certainly as referees and hopefully as, as players that you know the older you get the harder it is to come from recoveries so these side tackles and you know a little bit of a shoulder barge here or a nudge there <laughs> you know they can be gentle looking but if you hit the deck like say you're playing indoors that's like has consequences especially yeah. If you're a little older and your bones are not up to standard, you yeah, know. Yeah. But the good thing about playing indoors, you will strengthen those bones. Yeah. But the whole ethos from a referee point of view and walking football itself is get those guys and girls who are 40 and 50 yeah. and haven't been active for a while. Give them a different outlet, you know. Yeah, because yeah. It, uh, team sports for that age group is fairly limited. Yes. So it is. Yeah, and tell me, how, what about your own involvement in there? Uh, you seem to know a bit, a bit about it at this yeah, stage. Yeah, well, uh, I'm a bit of an enthusiast, uh, to be honest. Uh, some people uh, think I'm just uh, addicted to the game, really. Yeah. Uh, I started off playing when uh, I actually turned 15. Uh, 50, I'm not, in 2015, rather than turned 15. <laughs> I, start, I started in 2015, I started playing, and then I got an injury. And I thought, oh, well, if this is the end of me playing career, even in walking football, I thought, well, what am I going to do now? I, I looked at refereeing, hadn't done refereeing before at all. So I plead to the guys and girls who are out there and haven't even officiated. This is your opportunity to get that whistle, get a bit of power into, yeah. into those lungs and you know, enjoy yourself in different angles. And you might fancy playing, but certainly I, I appeal to referees to have given up the game, yeah. to come back to walk football, yeah. you know? Um, so I, I started in 2015, I did start a referee in 2018. And I have done local tournaments, national tournaments, I'm international tournaments, I've been lucky. Uh, this year I was in Zurich at the FIFA headquarters. I was also in uh, Albufeira at the Europa Copa. So I have, well, I, I have I mean, seen a few. I'm very lucky, Damon. I just, I just spotted someone in black there who was, who was interested in the game. And so, so tell me something now. You obviously played football when you were younger. 
Yeah, I did. I played the Gaelic football like that. When I went over, went to London, like many Irish people went over to London for work. You know, I played Gaelic football even when I was there. But I, I, I played soccer then later on, you know, uh, and I kind of progressed from walking football into walking football. I was inactive for five years or yeah, so, you yeah. know. A bit of a jog here and a bit of a jog there. But the football wise, I've come back into football through walking football in 2015. And then, okay, three years later, you got a little bit of injury, wanted to stay back in the game, and you got involved in, in refereeing. I did. At approximately, what, 53, 54 years of age? Well, I, 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 I can't admit to that kind of thing, but you're very close. <laughs> yeah, you're very close. <laughs> I was working out the maths there if you started in 2015. Yeah. But listen, that is a, it's a great story. So you, you're, you're living in England then, do you? I do indeed, yeah. Okay. I'm based, I'm based in England, so I, I actually help out with the Republic of Ireland Walking Football Association. I'm, for my sins, I'm a treasurer of it. All oh, right, I, okay. I coordinated the referees here. So we've got seven referees here today. You know, they come from all parts of England. We also got a, a Mark Murphy, who's from Athlone. So he's uh, our Irish man in, on the inside track. Yeah, yeah. Oh, what, what a great story. I mean, I feel like, I feel like I've uh, walked into uh, Aladdin's cave now because, you know, a striker online, <laughs> we're so excited about grassroots football. And, you know, the little missing piece, you know, we're, we're big uh, proponents of, you talked about indoor there, of futsal. You know, we're way behind the curve in terms of futsal and we're way behind the curve in terms of walking football. And we see ourselves here as, as being able to grab this opportunity and grow with it. Striker Online can grow with this walking football uh, phenomenon. I think it's going to be a phenomenon. What, what would you predict in terms of the next five years here well, in Ireland? Basically, if you look at England, and I know us Irish are a bit dodgy looking at England any time, you know, for advice and, and guidance. But if you look at England, uh, last year Sports England, the, the big body in, our, in the UK for sport, uh, looked at walking football and they estimated that on any one day of, during the year, about 200,000 people were playing walking football, had played walking football during that year. You know? Wow. So, it's, I mean, okay, you have 50 million people in the UK, but even if you get that kind of take up in a uh, proportion to take up in Ireland, imagine the amount of people that would be off the sofa and out getting a bit of fresh air in the lungs. Exactly. I was just telling the, the lads from England there, the golf clubs would be running for the hills. Well, this is it. Uh, we, we were, we're looking at every angle. So even if you're a golfer or a, bow, a bowls or, you know, or you haven't taken a, been going to the, the, the football matches or the hurling matches or, you know, your opportunity to go and walk in football, it's growing, especially in Dublin and, and uh, Galway, Limerick and Athlone. There's opportunities there. All you have to do is tap into that scene and and, and the other back. The, the other brilliant thing, and we can see that the girls are playing behind us, and I think it's brilliant. So the girls can start playing from 40 on. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So because the girls, well, let's say the game for football for the girls, wasn't available. Exactly. We, they've come down an age group effectively. Great it started idea. off as men at 50 and plus. Great but idea. we've reached out to the women to try to get the women's game up and running. What? Running? You never run. Nobody runs. Yeah, it's yeah, walking yeah. It's walking. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Damien, well All done. Right. Thanks Lovely. a million. Thanks for your time. Okay, brilliant. Right. Thank Cheers, you. Man.